Katalaso Ministries, be ye reconciled. These are the days of the abundant explosion of the Word of God, where the deep calls unto the deep as we experience the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. With the man of God, Apostle above. It is expedient that you know God, that you may know yourself. It says that you may know Him, the only true God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Exposing the heart of the Father in Christ and exercising the consciousness of men to the truth. And the Bible says that in those days, these days, knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. Knowledge is the key. Do you face contradiction or feel unsatisfied with some part of scripture? Is the life of salvation still a struggle for you? Or finding it hard to manifest the spirit? This is the good news. There is a banners of grace for you right here. And now, Catalasso Ministries welcomes you to feast at meat, the table of grace that shall build you up to the fullness that filleth all things. Make flesh spirit. Father, I thank you tonight for your abundant grace and mercy. Thank you for every soul presented in this look. Thank you, Father, for their individual lives. Thank you for their purposes that you have laid on each and every of them. This evening, as we share in your word, may you open our hearts and may you illuminate our hearts with light and cause understanding. And Father, may you speak to every heart from its place of understanding, but lift it to this degree to which you want to call us in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Amen. Someone say me. Hallelujah. Amen. I introduced to us a series. A series of a teaching. That I called relationship series. Praise God. Relationship series. And I think I did the first episode. And today, I want to touch the second episode. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the singles are saying we are waiting. Those that are having shattering marriages are saying we are ready. Praise God. But what I'm going to share today shall help the short and the tall shall help the Fat and the small shall help a man in an organization in the marriage relationship, a man who has a friend, a man who is in ministry, in all manner of aspects of relations. This is going to help you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What I'm going to share is one of the things that many people do not want to hear about something that not many people want to uh, embless to, to, to accept. Isn't everyone listening to me? Everyone listening to me? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm saying that this is something that is not so popular to many people. Yet, yet it is very important if we, you, you're talking about relationship. It's very important for us to understand and have it in the foundation Hallelujah. Amen. of this series. Amen. Amen. I think the first one was my enemy work hard. Not so. Amen. My enemy what? Work hard. My enemy work hard. And the episode two, I call it sowing into your enemy. Amen. Amina. Sowing into your enemy. If indeed you mean it, that your enemy is working for you with that very heart of understanding, then you must sow into your enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you understand that your enemy is not working against you, but is working for you, is your employee. Hallelujah. Amen. In disguise. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, you can sow a seed in your enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No, you shall repeat. Hallelujah. Amen. Didn't I tell you that this is not popular? Now you're looking at your co-wife. You're looking at the way you're going to sow into them. Eh? Amen. You're looking at that man that made you get in prison. Yet you had no problem. Now you're looking at the way you're going to go and sow into them. It does not sound popular. But it saves too much touching a man's destiny. Are you listening to me now? Okay, I see the screen is breaking. Is it, is it, is it going to help us? Okay. And uh, let us read from Luke. Sorry for those of you who are expecting a projection. Luke chapter 10. But power is coming soon. Someone is trying to fix something. And being stubborn to the work. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. The, the gospel of Luke. Verse number 27. To begin with. The Bible says. Bible but I say to you. Who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Are we okay? Amen. Uh, let us speak it together. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Now turn it to yourself and say, I will love my enemies. I will do good to those who hate me. Say it again. I will love my enemies. I will do good to those who hate me. Praise God. Okay, let's read. The Bible says, But I said to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray to those 
who spitefully use you. I to me. Amen. That word for spitefully is, is, is literally to, for example, if a man calls you and tells you you are the main speaker of this conference. And then you come and then when you come, they, you sit and wait. They call the first preacher. They preach. They call the second preacher. They preach. They call the third preacher. They preach. And they, call, they, 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 they invite the last preacher. And then you think maybe the last preacher is me. And they call the last preacher. And they tell you to clap for the last preacher. <laughs> Praise God. Those people are sp <laughs> spitefully using you. Probably they called you, they wanted you to bring a certain number of people to the conference. Probably they wanted you to attend you personally. So that's what it means. Listen to me. Someone invites you on the wedding, and then you reach the wedding, and they tell you, but you're not on the invitation list. But you were invited. You're not there. So such a kind of a nuisance. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that those who spite use you, you pray for them. Don't go on cursing them. You pray for them. Because behind them is a manipulative spirit. Amen? Amen. The spirit of manipulation. So pray for them. Are you listening to me? That is why there are many only one side. This is not popular. Because I told you to Hallelujah. Amen. It is not popular. Hallelujah. You do what? You pray for them. They tell you that you are the one who is singing the next Sunday. On Saturday, they inform you that it's another person. What do you do? Do you quit the choir? What do you do? Do you leave church? No, you pray for them. Kalibo do your santa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now tell your neighbor, neighbor, this we are going to eat. It is too tasty. It is too beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. But are the people behind there hearing me? Is my voice coming to you? Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Okay, let us first get Jesus' uh, perspective. He says, to him who strikes you on one of the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give him also the, the coat. If someone tell, takes away the, the cloak, give them the coat also. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, I'm trying to say that if someone takes your money, Amen. Amen. Call them Baite. and give them even the balance. Obo, 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 balance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. There is wisdom in that. There is wisdom in that. Because Kubanga. you cannot call Jesus stupid. Yesu Who is telling you that? There is wisdom in that. And you are blessed to be in this service. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, so you give it also to them. 
Karida yozo. If someone takes your wife, give them even the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if, if you're saying, hey, now, what, what would you do? Will you fight? Will you get a panga? Will you buy, buy a gun? No. Karindo Karindo Zula. In Jesus' name. Let us read. Jesus says, yes, Give to everyone who asks of wa, you. Wa and from him who takes away your goods, e, 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 do not ask them back. If they take your goods, don't ask them back. Listen to me. That's why some uh, traders received wisdom and they said goods once taken and not returnable. So on every receipt it is there. Goods once taken and not returnable. Amen. Amen. So don't take goods and bring them back. So if you you give someone your shoe. Don't demand it back. If someone gets use of your cloth and they know it's, it's not theirs and they are not bringing it back, don't call it back. Don't call it back. But for you, you call it back. No fear, no conde, no gambling. You even no lami za. You even you you even threaten. You will take me out of the spirit. And me, when I got born again, At I was not. I be, did not become a fool. And I will cut my wires. Like umeme. umeme. Praise the Lord. Don't call it back. Praise Jesus. Yes, we have Do you know why me? Oh, man, you are Okay, I won't say that. Because I'll make certain people stubborn. In Jesus' name. The Bible says. Bible and just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. The question is, how do you want men to treat you? How do you want men to do to you? The same way you want them to do to you, do to them. Amen? Amen. If you are plotting to kill someone, it means you also love to be killed. So what you need to be done to you is what you should do to another person. If you, someone takes your money and they do not return it. And you go on their door with all the neighbors and you shout at them and tell them how they took your money and how they should return it and how they are thieves. They are crooked liars. As you're doing that, you are telling God that that's what you want. Meaning, somehow, you find your life in the fix where you need to borrow or to receive help. And then, you have hindrance. You have hindrance to pay back or to return. And a more stubborn man shall come also to take it back. 
if you were fi- shouting in the volume of 40, they shall fi- shout in the volume of 90. They will not only shout, they will beat you, and after they beat you, they will, they, will, they will throw you to jail. Because they will have more influence than you have. Now, what does it say? What does it mean? It means when we are dealing with people, we must be so much cautious with the judgments of God. Amen. Amen. The judgments of the judgments of God. And you get me where we are going. I want you to first pick Jesus' heart. The Bible says. But if you love those who love you, what credit is, is it to you? Amen? Amen. For even sinners do the same. Even sinners love those that love them. Praise God. The Bible says, and if you lend to those from whom you hope, to receive back. Amen. Amen. What credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. Listen. Amen. Sinners lend to sinners. So literally. It is a sinner that should borrow. Amen. <laughs> Did you hear that? It's a sinner that should borrow. A righteous man, a believer, should not borrow. Can I read for you again? The Bible says, if you lend if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back. Meaning, it is the righteous man's position to lend. Like the Bible says, you shall lend to nations. Amen. Amen. But part B shows us who to lend to. And your, the Bible says, And if you learn to those from whom you learned, from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners learned to sinners to receive as much back. Sinners do not learn to believers. Sinners do not learn to righteous men. Sinners learn to sinners. Tell your neighbor, I'm free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, any day you find yourself a sinner, <coughs> you find yourself a sinner, go and borrow. <laughs> Praise God. The day you identify yourself a righteous man, forget borrowing. In Jesus' name. Does that ring a bell for you touching the banks? The bank to lend you, it needs evidence that you can pay it back. So all banks are sinful. And they should lend to fellow sinners. For you, you should lend to the banks. Did you listen to me? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says to be uh, uh, to be merciful. Bible Just as our Father is merciful. And known to judge men. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Bible gamba, verse 26, that is a pretext. The Bible says, but I said to you, Bible gamba, okay, 26 says, what to you, Bible gamba, when all men speak well of you, that means, God does not expect you to be clean among all men. There is a problem if every man says tick, 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 tick. There is a problem. The Bible says, what to you? What to you when all men speak well of you? For you, you want everyone to speak good of you. You want to go to Kataraso, those accounts. Apostle Bav is a false prophet. Me, I won't do this. I, I won't preach to those ones, they are prostitutes. I won't sit there, they are drunkards. Oh, they may call me a drunkard. What to you? Praise God. The Bible says, what to you when all men speak well of you? For so did their fathers to the false prophet for so did their fathers to the false prophet now the Bible says there is a man who is a true prophet of God. And this prophet, everyone is speaking hell against him. And there is this other prophet who they take. Nobody speaks anything bad about them. And the Bible says that prophet is just replaying a story that the forefathers did to the old first prophet. Now, what our present world thinks, every man that they throw stones to or at, and the swords at, is this, is that, they think that that one is a false prophet. And they think the other ones that they are not speaking anything about. They are the right prophets. The true prophets. And the Bible says those ones are the false prophets and the ones they are talking here against. By the way, they are the true prophets. I want you to mention one prophet. A true prophet in your Bible that was at peace with men. Give me one. You give me one, just one. Even Jesus, who knew no sin, <laughs> was persecuted. That's why he says, what to you when every man is speaking good, speaking well about you, because chances are the spirit operating on you is familiar. Are we okay? Are we okay? Yeah, that's why we inherited persecution in the things that we inherited. Persecution is inclusive. Now, you, do you see why I, I'm not annoyed and mad at the people that are talking against me and against this ministry? Why? Because I know the truth. Amen. Amen. And it comes from that context of people that praise 
false prophets and they decampaign the true prophets. And then Jesus begins to talk about loving your enemies. Listen to me. Listen to me. And that's why me, I love my enemies. I've never found a man who has spoken something against me. And I tell them you are speaking this against me. No, I don't want to bring back. We greet. God is good. Thank you so much for serving. And we part. I don't, I don't, I don't ask anything. I don't cross-examine. I don't prosecute. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Accusations is iruma. Do, do the accusations pain? Some things hurt. But by the time that God put that glory on you, gave you that grace to be able to carry every manner of pain, grief, sorrow that can come out of that. I listen to me now. But you are listening to me. So, what am I trying to say? Whatever you sow, whatever you sow, Whatever you sow will come back to you. Whatever you sow. It is a principle. No, no. As the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Listen to me. Listen to me. So whatever you sow will come back to you. Is someone following me? Please follow me. Whatever you sow will come back to you. Whatever you sow will come back to you. That's why I'm talking about sowing into our enemies. Sow so into your enemies. Because whatever you sow into your enemy shall come back to you. Meaning, sowing is sowing. And a seed is a seed. Whenever you put a seed in the soil, it shall come back. So if you sow evil seeds in your enemy, you shall definitely reap evil. I listen to me. Because even that is the ground, the moment you put the seed in the ground, the Bible says it shall come back to you. Sharadaba Zatali Zantama. Come here. Yangua. Saridaloya. Mosontolaya. Please hurry up. Just sit here. Karedele Zanta Bradia. Satarada. Abadeneba Cherubi. He has been with the cherubins. Maradikaya. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Every ground carries its inherent power to produce, to make the seed produce and yield fruit. So if you sow evil for evil, you reap evil. Are we okay? Are we okay, church? I know there is something I'm healing today by the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There is something that I'm cutting in someone. By the Spirit of Truth. So, the Bible says that whatsoever you sow will come back to you. 
The only difference is that many times when it is coming back, it comes back multiplied. It comes back multiplied. Now, if you saw something evil in your enemy, it will come back multiplied to you. If you saw something good in your enemy, it shall come back multiplied. Let me tell you someone. Jesus told you, if you saw or you learn to those that you expect to return, or you saw to those that are good to you, what credit is it to you? Meaning, there is no credit, there is no much profit in sowing into a person with whom you are in good terms. The scripture is telling you the most fertile soil to sow in is your enemy. Someone you are not in good terms. That is the greatest fertile soil that can yield a hundredfold. Did you hear me? Did you really hear me? You are single. You want to get married. To me. And there is a guy who broke your heart. And even today, even when you dream about him, you get sick. Are you saying to me? You, is, is one thing you would, you would rather find the devil but not meet that guy. Now listen to me. That guy is your door to marriage. That guy is your door to marriage. That is the greatest fertile soil. When you hear that that guy is getting married or married, run with your seed. But for you, you would rather pay the service provider so that they do not go on the reception, reception than getting that money and you cover the cake and you buy the buffet. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Yes, we have a good Lord. Yes, we have a good Lord. The Bible says Bible in the Galatians, Mubagalatia. chapter number six, e verse number seven. It's a very popular scripture that Chawa we have all read Chawa and we have all loved. But what does the Bible say? E Bible the Bible says, Bible Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. That he will also reap. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen to me. The Bible did not say wherever a man sows, therein shall a man reap. No. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, the Bible is talking about the seed, not the ground. Listen to me. Amen. So the Bible is saying that what you sow into your enemy, you find it somewhere. Some people do good to people because they expect the same people to do good to them. I helped you. No, and you didn't help me. Kale. Okay. Let me wait for you. I, I finished Nagalao. you. I closed. It's a new chapter. I to me. Amen. 
Listen to me. Then you did understand the scripture. The scripture says, whatever a man sows, that also shall reap. That you can sow in the ground, but not reap from the same ground, but whatever you, whatever you sow, you shall reap in harvest. Now, if you, if you sow head into your enemy, you'll be surprised that the person you love most shall hate you. You'll be so shocked that your husband will begin to hate you and you don't know why. You'll be so shocked the heart of your parents will begin to turn against you and you don't know why. You'll be so shocked that uh, your children will begin to be mindless about you. But you don't know why. It is the seed that you sowed and you thought it ended with your enemy yet you just sowed the seed and now you are reaping it in your husband. Are we getting it? Are you following me now? Sowing into your enemy. Sowing into your enemy. So when you hear the word enemy, you are thinking about something bad. That if it's your enemy, you should reap bad. Be mindful the kind of prayer you make for your enemy. When the Bible says that pray for your enemies, be mindful the kind of prayers you make for your enemy. Because even those are seeds. Even those kinds of prayers are seeds. Because just how you have prayed for your enemy, that way you shall reap. The same shall you reap. If you pray, Father, let my enemy not live long. That seed, you shall reap its harvest. Now, how should the man pray for their enemy? Because we understand that the enemy is the most fertile soil for sowing. Then, if you want to harvest good harvest, then go to your enemy and pray fervently with fervence and tell God, love on this man. Protect this man. Keep this man alive. Help this man's heart not to keep guile and bitterness. Are you saying to me? Pray a prayer. Listen, get yourself and what you want and pray it for your enemy. Did you know that grounds or soil in which the seed is sown does not eat from the harvest? So even if you pray good prayers to your enemy, they will not eat their own. Because that's a seed. You are just sowing a seed. That's the ground. But it is you who reap. But it is important that your heart is pure and aligned to the spirit of Christ that you cannot be a blessing and you curse. The same mouth cannot speak, Father, bless, 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 and say, Father, curse, curse, curse. No, it cannot be. So what do you do? You pray blessing for your enemy. That is the ground. But those seeds will come back to you. Sowing into your enemy. Praise Jesus. And I'm not talking about disguise and pretense. That you're going to pray and you're saying, God bless. But your heart is saying, I wish he dies. God protect. But your heart says, let him go and fall into a car. No. No. Are you 
align your heart tereza mutimago 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 and then pray ati uluva nyuma osabe from the purity okuva mu butukuvu of your heart ugo mutimago nkukakasa i assure you you will tell me you thank me later praise the lord jesus are you hearing me now amen so whatever man soweth reaps the ground does not reap are we okay that point are we okay that point That should help you not to mind about who you're sowing into. Whether they love you or they don't love you. Whether they care or they don't care. But when your heart points and sees a need on that particular person, put your seed. Take away your seed. And sometimes you don't even need the soil to know you. No, you can employ wisdom. Because not every man that harvested, not every man that harvested was in the chambers. So the ground may not see your foot. But your seed is in the ground. What am I talking about? Maybe you cannot even meet that person. And maybe that person cannot allow to meet you. But you can send your seed some other way. And it can still be planted. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no man that talks against me and, and my ministry that I do not sow into. And I'm telling you, they don't know. But I make sure that the seed will flatten their heart. Praise God. Amen. I'll make sure that their heart must recognize that seed. Are you saying to me, somebody, somebody but you're listening to me now, that kind of a person will never grow greater than I. They will never get over me. I'm telling you. They will never go above me. Never. It's not possible. That is one way of taming people. Taming. Okoma kubantu. Are you listening to me now? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And some of you have sowed seeds in you. Abantu abamu kumwe nsize nsigo bumwe. Kadela boyo. Hallelujah. Amen. Not as my enemies. Singa balabe bange. No. Nedda. But as my sons and daughters. Ga bawala bange batabanya. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone was already scared. No. Muto mwa badati de. You must be greater than I. Oteke do kubera waguru wange. In the name of Jesus. The owner has taken it. Praise the Lord. So if whatever you saw you reap, it means if you want battles, so battles. Amen. Amen. If you want to be back beaten, back bite people. Simple. Changu. Principle. No, no. Say low. Take her. You backbite people. Wege yabantu. You rip. Na uja kungula. Full measure. Echigere chijude. Place down. Nga chikatidua. Running over. Nga chikulukuta. The Bible says, with the same measure a man giveth. Kwa yabule gama nechigere chichimo muntu cha koze soku wayo. Shall rip. Chana kungula. It shall come back into the abode. Praise God. Praise Jesus. 
So osango omuntu nga ino lubuto. Now you find a man with a big stomach. Nengo lubuto lwalina. But that big stomach they are having. Lwagusigo gwe yasiga. Is for the seed that they sowed. Kugamba ngo lubuto lo omuntu olulimu ebizibukanana. And in that person's stomach there are 8000 problems. Bibuka yo bubusinga mata tunebigamba mpa mutima. They just jump out like cards and they say give me the hearts. Omutima ne gulwala. And then they had gugamba pa dai. Give me Obasanga bafa badayinga. You just find them dai. Are you getting me? Ombulira. Are you hearing me? Kaza tilaya. Haina lubuto. Zaving is very strong. But they sold it. Yavisiga. They sold it. Atene boyari asiga loza anti mutufu. And even when they were sowing, they thought they were true. Kubati yamanya namula ya katonda. Because they didn't know the judgments of God. Yaloza asiga mumulabi. They thought they are sowing into their enemy. Galozo mulaba asobolo kungule nsigo. Thinking that the enemy will reap that seed. Nata manyanti omulabi taka. Not knowing that the enemy is the ground. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says Bible in Proverbs Mungero, chapter 21 e sura e mwuru, mwemu. Are you with me? Tuliwamu. Proverbs Engero, chapter 21 e sura mwemu. and verses number 20 oh, 13. The Bible reads Bible Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Let me read it again. Whoever shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Listen. This one has abundance. He's rich. And the poor is crying to this fellow. Please. 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 I don't want to know. Recession. I'm in a recession. Did we eat with you? Dogs of the town. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Bible you shut your ear, but you also, you will cry, and no one will be able to hear you. You won't be heard. Meaning, what makes this man come in the position where they are needy? To cry and no one is answering is the seed they sowed. When a man was crying and they saw the seed of scorning, mocking, mocking and not hearing, they are pleading. So, that seed, however rich you are, it should produce. It has to come back to you. If maybe in your status, you may not be poor like this fellow, but even at the level you are, something will come and hit you heavy that you need to cry. But even when you cry, you find yourself sinking and sinking and sinking and, and no one is hearing you. I'm telling you, that's what your Bible says. It's divine counsel. Divine wisdom. So you must be mindful of the seeds you are sowing. The seeds you are sowing are key. Are you listening to me? Let me tell you one story. A story is told. Touching one of our fathers. Here. Is called. Apostle Omutume Deo Balabi Kubo. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You remember him. Mumu Jukida. You have heard about him. Mumu Urideko. In his days, Munakuse. There came a man called John Obiliobua. 
John Obileboa. Amen. Amen. John Obileboa. John Obileboa was a certain prophet that came on this land Uganda. And he persuaded the city. And the church. Because the church, those days, was still young. They didn't know much. Praise God. They didn't know what? Much. So, this guy comes from Nigeria and comes here. And remember, Nigeria was ahead of us. So they had started getting understanding of the Bible. And so when they ke we came here, because he had much exposure to the Christian dome, he influenced. And God sends Balabi Kubo from the U.S. And because Balabi Kubo was also exposed, to where the gospel comes to come here, we get missionaries from the United States, from England. Praise God. Amen. So Bala Yekubo was also enlightened. In fact, most of the people that claim fatherhood from Bala Yekubo do not carry his message. Do not carry his message. If you listen to Bala Yekubo, you can, you can listen to to a man Omusaji. who is eloquent, fervent in the spirit, and he knows the truth. He knows the grace message. He was a man of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. But because of what was trading much in his time, God assigned him to deal with the witchcraft. Because sorcery was too much. Traditionalism. Hallelujah. Amen. So he focused much on that area. But when you, 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 you read behind his message, he was a man of grace. Now it's recently that he, his successor embraced the grace message. Praise God. I think he went back and listened to the Father and understood. Now Bishop Musi is preaching grace. Grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, there are things that cannot just jump out quickly, but at least the heart is pure. And has embraced the grace. So this man of God, one time, they are meeting in the fellowship. John Obiri Obua influenced them. Praise God. That even the churches, even the pastors that were recognizable, they yielded to him. So he made a meeting and uh, they were there. They came. Pastor Robert Kayanja and uh, uh, Pastor Deo Balabi Kubo. They also were there. What did this man do? John Obirobua told them, I want to show you the power of God. And called a woman. And told them, bring a benson. And they brought a benson. And they put their water in the benson. And told the woman to kneel down there. And John uh, John Obirobua sat there. And then the woman knelt before the woman is a basin of, wo of water. And John Obirobua put his hands in the basin of water and got his hands and put them inside the, the woman's stomach. Like putting the hands through the woman's stomach. And they entered there and he, 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 he took like he, he, uh, he got blood. He fetched blood from the inside of the stomach. And he poured in the basin. 
and put his hands again and put them back and when he put them out the, the woman's flesh closes and put them in and fetches blood powers in the basin and the woman's uh, 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 stomach closes and Many people, including some of our fathers, like uh, one I won't mention anyway, because for him, he yielded to John Obiroboa. I listen to me. Amen. He yielded to John Obiroboa. Even when he died, he escorted the body yeah, to the burial. He, he was shocked shocked when he reached there and they are burying this man. And this man was a chief witch. There, the way they were burying him, it was a witchcraft was everywhere. But he's a man of God and he believed in John as the true prophet of God. He's even one of the people that went to escort. So I won't mention mention that man of God for that purpose. Praise God. Because he's one of the great apostles here. Listen to me. When Deo Balabie Kubo saw the demonstration, he stood up and said, Brethren, this is not God. This is not the power of God. So when he said that, he started moving away. When he started moving away, Pastor Robert Kayanja also stood up and followed John Deo Praise God. And the rest of the people, and even this renowned man of men of God, that they are, I, did, I don't want to mention, they all fell down and they knelt down and they told the prophet, Forgive us to son you. Forgive us to son you. Women began crying. <laughs> Hey, you have blasphemed the prophet. Oh, 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 How can you speak like that to the prophet? Oh, <laughs> and as Deo was moving away, Obiroboa told Deo, stand at his. Deo stood. And John Obiri told Deo, I give you three days to seek forgiveness and repent. If you don't, upon your life. And John Obiriobua sat down. And came, made like three steps and said, hey, John, John what you have just said, I have sold it into you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then oh. he walked out. Now, and Pastor Robert Kanye also followed. Now, Kakati. three days, exactly three days, John Obiriobua John was uh, passing Karere there. A trailer, trailer. came. And thought probably there is some juice in Obiriobua. It bruised him. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. After three, three days, that's how some of our guys come and they go to take the body to bury the man. But but Deo, Deo did he not know yamanya, that he has he said yagamba, what you have said yogede, I have sold it into you. Meaning Chitegeza. it is my seed kept in the ground and I shall reap it. So it does not matter how but, long it takes. Kate, chite, 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 the truth is, on the way to a crusade in Jinja, Deo Kubo was crushed in an accident also. Whatsoever you saw, you repeat. It is a principle. No, no. 
It's not something to be prayed of. <laughs> it is a principle. No, no. A dear man of God died crashed in an accident. So, Obili died in an accident. Even died in an accident. They sold into each other. But is someone listening to me? Am I speaking to you? Am I speaking to you? Amen. Listen to me. Puliriza. Elijah Elia. beheaded the false prophets. And get, guess what happened? Elijah himself Elia was beheaded. Whatever you sow, you reap. Because Elijah returned, the spirit of Elijah returned through John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was beheaded. Don't be mistaken, John the Baptist was Elijah. Beheaded the first prophets. Himself was beheaded also. Whatever you saw, you shall reap it. Sowing into your enemy. Think about your enemy. And what are the contemplations in your heart? What do you think about them? I wish they listen to me. The job. They will chase you away. They might even chase you and they go. Just to know. Together, you sow the seed, it is coming, coming in return. Tell your neighbor. Zintarimu. Zileku. Gata korinda moloso. Adon zintalo. Hallelujah. Mukama Do you know what you have just told them? You have told them eat it. Chinyere kona amazi. And take water. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, some of the life situations are not demonic. Are you saying to me? Amen. They are harvests of seeds sown. Some of the life situations are not demonic. They are seed, they are harvests Makungula. of the seeds sown. So you find yourself in the situation. First contemplate and remember where you sowed it. Where you sowed it. Before you shandalaba. 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 No, you are a sower. Listen to me. <laughs> You are a sower. Shandalaba tomuyita. Don't call Shandalaba. Take your harvest. Twala makungu lago. Sowing into your enemy. Okusiga mumulabe o. That's why you must love your enemies, brother. You will be loved in return. You will be loved in Loving those ababata agarika. Okwagala those ones that are not lovable. Those that are not lovable. Oh my goodness, time is running. Okay, I still have minutes. Praise the Lord Jesus. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, learn to sow good seeds. Learn to sow good seeds. Hallelujah. Amen. It will kindle a fire upon his head. Oh, her head. When you sow good seeds, Seeds to your enemy. You kindle a fire. Don't think they will have peace. No. You kindle a fire on their heads. The Bible says whether they not see who's doing it or not, the fire will spark. It will spark. They will never have peace. They will never rest. 
Those that will find counsel, they will even come and repent before you. Listen to me. But they never have peace. But for you want to fight carnal battles, fight the God's godly way. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. When you do good to your enemy and you kindle, you, you kindle the fire on their head, they will eventually run to you to quench it. They will run to you to quench it. Because, because they did not start the fire, they cannot quench it. Are you listening to me? Amen. They cannot quench what they did not start it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. You listen to me. Second Chronicles 16, verse number 1 to number 7, shows you a man, Asa. This king believed on God to fight his enemies. I listen to Amen. me. And at one point, he, he, he beat down and destroyed greater nations like Ethiopia, Ethiopia. with its allied forces. And God beat these people and won the battle for him. And after the battles, the man grew, prospered. And then there was a threat for him. And this time, this man did not run to God for God to fight his battles. No. He decided to fight himself. And then he went to his friends. He took riches and good possessions and then sent to one of the kings and asked the king to join him to fight these fellows. I listened to me. And when they went and fought, indeed they won. I listen to me. And after winning their enemy, God comes and makes a sentence. The judgment of God comes in later. The Bible says, uh, uh, Second Chronicles 16, I think we begin from verse number uh, 7. The Bible says, Bible and at that time, the Hanani, Anani, the seer came to Asa, Nigeri, Asa king of Judah, and said Abedani, to him, Namugamba, because you have relied on the king of Syria, and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore, the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Every time you try to fight your enemy with your own hand, you are making your enemy escape from your, post, your, 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 your ability. You are making your enemy be greater than you. Amen. Amina. Because Syria was once yali, Asa's enemy. Yaliko, Asa. But now kano, Asa, Asa is conniving with Syria to fight Musuri, enemies. Even got possessions and sold seeds to overcome a certain uh, army. Are you following me, Samuel? Please follow me, I want to finish. And then, the Bible says, you have not relied on the Lord, therefore, the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army? 
with very many chariots, horsemen, yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hands. Number nine. Uh, he delivered them into your hands. Yes. For the eyes of the Lord run to and flow throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Another word there is perfect. Perfect to him. And the Bible says, in this, you have done foolishly. You have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have war. From now on, you shall have war. But the man just went, fought battles, and overcame the war. And because he saw the seed of fighting battles, God tells him, brother, you are going to harvest the seed you have sown. From now on, you are going to have Battles. Wars. Continual. Listen to me. Continual. The day you confronted that person. And you busted yourself. And, uh, you you sold something you don't know. You sold something you don't know. Listen to me. That's why he says that the Lord shall fight for you and you shall keep your peace. We fight in peace because we know how to fight. When you put your hand on the man, I, I, sometimes I, I listen to this uh, uh, things that come from the pastor's fellowship staff. And they are talking about breaking katalaso. Breaking fanero. And I even laugh. With their hands. To break fanero. To break katalaso. That's a joke. Listen to me. They are just calling war on their on their gates. On their on their doors. In their ministries. Their ministries will break. I'm telling you. It's not a curse. It's a cancel. Their ministries shall scatter. The more they fight, the more they will be scattered. Because he says, the enemy shall come in one way. And I shall scatter them in seven ways. Now, I, I am sorry for a man who set themselves as my enemy. Because they know how to stand. And the man who knows how to stand cannot easily fall. More so when they are not standing in their effort. And on the, on the legs of flesh. Are you hearing me now? Sowing into your enemies. Sowing into your enemies. Hallelujah. Now put this down. Sowing love into your enemy is an invitation. Are you with me? Sowing love into your enemy is an invitation signal to God to fight for you. All your enemy's efforts to advance your cause Sowing into your enemy. It is an invitation signal to God to fight for you. All the efforts of your enemies to advance your cause. And I'm talking about sowing good seeds. Listen to me. Sowing good seeds. 
There is a man one day who saw his brother. His brother was being plundered. And that was Esau. So, saw so the sons of Jacob. The sons of Jacob were being plundered. Praise God. And they were in captivity. Amen. I listen to me. The war had come on their walls. Sa and the so, Saul stood the far off. Naimilia wala. Eso. Eso. Sorry. Stood the far. Naimilia wala. This story. The Lord is gonna give it to me. Kama gena kurumba. And it is gonna help you. Ate gena kuyamba. But am I with someone also? Nina umutu yena aliwa muna ange. Is someone helping me? Is it Obadiah? Obadiah is Sulem. Okay. Saratili Gabradila. Thank you. That is it. Now, this, this happened. It is a prophet against Edom. Edom. And remember, Edom was inheritance for Esau. Praise God. Are you with me? The Bible says, I think it's a very short, we can read it through. The vision of Obadiah, that says the Lord, God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us rise up against half of battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. The pride of your heart, the pride of your heart has deceived you. You who dwell in the cleft of the rock. Whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? So this is how Esau was thinking. They were thinking they were great because they were on mountains and they were staying in caves in rocks. And they didn't think anyone can bring them down. The Bible says, Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves had come to you, if robbers by night, oh, how you will be cut off. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? He's telling them, you have too much. That even if thieves and robbers came to steal, they cannot steal all your possessions and finish them. They can take what they want and they can live a lot. If grape gather, gatherers had come to you, would they not have left some uh, uh, greenings? Oh, how Esau shall be searched out. How his hidden treasure shall be sought after. God is telling this fellow, your, your treasures, they are hidden, but they are going to be 
sought out. They are going to hunt for them and take them. But we are going to see where it comes from. All the men in your confide, confidacy or confidacy, sorry, the people in his confidacy shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who ate your, your bread shall lay at a trap for you. No one is aware of it. Will I not in that day say says the Lord, even he destroyed the wise men from Edom. God is too annoyed. And understanding from the mountains of Esau, then your mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Edom mistreated his brother. Edom mistreated his brother. For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you. For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you. Listen to me. Amen. So Esau thinks Jacob is my enemy, took my blessing, he, whatever they have is my birthright. I have to fight it. That is my position. It has to be my office. I have to be the leader. I have to lead the song. Lead. Yes. Don't worry. You shall be cut off. The Bible says. And forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and he cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. God is saying, when you stood afar off, Esau, and you just looked, when strangers came, invaded Judah, and, 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 and plundered whatever they have, they cast lots on Jerusalem, and were just enjoying. God says, as you, were, you did not throw a stone maybe, but for you that you were here enjoying, you were as one of them. You were on the team that came to invade. Are you listening to me? And then he says, Oh, Jesus. But don't we have projection now? Oh, you need prayer. But I will consider to go with mine. Which verse are we? Twelve. Okay, let me read eleven again. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. But you should not have guessed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of their distress. You should have entered 
Okay, you should not have entered the gates of my people in the day of their calamity. Listen to me. Amen. That this fellow are in danger. And even Esau. The Esau entered and saw how they are taking stuff and tells them you are leaving some gold here. You, you come for this. Some stuff they keep in this room. Have you checked in the underground? You check underground. They have more possessions. But me I'm not taking. But I'm just helping you to take. That was Esau. So God is telling him, you would not have guessed on them. And you would not have rejoiced. Be careful when you're rejoicing on people who are in trouble. Sister Tambla, the sister is walking, and then they shook it. And then you say, hi, she shows off. She shows off, let us see. You have sown a seed. You have sown a seed. So God makes a judgment and says, You should not have entered the gates, watched on their calamities. Indeed, you should not have guessed on their affliction in the day of their calamity. No laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those among them who escaped. So there are people who escaped from the city and as they were running Esau was in the crossroads. Whoever was running, they cut them off. Don't run. Go back. Go back and dig. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that funny? Oh, Rasadigabo. You should not have stood on the crossroads to cut off those among them that escaped. No, should you have delivered up those among them who remain in the day of distress. So he knew the sacred covers. There were remnants that had remained and they had not gotten them. So so told the enemy. Ah, no growl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the day of the Lord upon all nations have I skipped? Upon all nations is near as you have done it shall be done to you. Amen? Amen. And your ripso shall return upon your own head. Whatever you sow, you reap. You reap. Just as you have enjoyed. It may not be Jacob. Because I will keep his heart pure toward you. But from another soil, you shall reap your, your, your seed. It will be done to you. A man will stand and they will enjoy. They will cut you off. Even the remnant shall be caught. Sowing into your enemy. May God give you wisdom to know how to deal with your enemies. And understand that your enemies are not harvesters. They are grounds. So, and the fertile soil are your enemies. So good seeds in your enemies. You shall reap a hundredfold and they are not eat from your harvest. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Father, we thank you. Just raise your hands. Father, we thank you. 
for your blessing this evening. Thank you for the divine counsel. And thank you for your word. Every man and woman. At the sound of my voice. Receives grace. To love. The unlovable. To love. Their enemies. The spirit of wisdom. And understanding. To trade in those territories comes in every man's soul. Like you say that we are sheep among wolves but we should be craft like snakes. Meaning we should not hurt the wolves. We should not fight them. But the wisdom of the spirit will make us survive. Will keep us. And you shall fight for us. Every man under the sound of my voice loses every woman or man that they had held on their hearts. They are no longer their enemy. They are sowing grounds and you're giving them good seeds and they shall be faithful to sow them and great will be their harvest in the mighty name of Christ Jesus I count it done somebody say amen say amen hallelujah amen is there anyone here and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You have never received, received Jesus Christ as your pastor Lord and Savior. Do you have anyone here? We don't have one. We don't have one. We don't have one. Okay. Get your offering. Let's give. Let's give. I only have five minutes on my time, so please don't catch me late. Please. Get your offering ready. Let's give. Father, we thank you for the blessing you have put in our lives. It is manifesting every day. Lord, even as we give today, may you redound back in our bosom the same measure, but shaken, placed down, and running over advantage every hand that gives. Prosper it. Show yourself strong on their behalf. For their heart is perfect before you. And they acknowledge you as God. They are help and reward. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Okay, come and give. Come and give. Saridali masate bradia. Caradilla, for God so loved the world, and He gave His only Son. Whosoever believes should not perish, but shall have. Eternal life for God, for God, so love the world. And he gave his only son, whosoever believes should not. Basara itano. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. At Alaso Ministries, be ye reconciled. These are the days of the abundant explosion of the Word of God, where the deep calls unto the deep as we experience the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. With the man of God, Apostle above. It is expedient that you know God, that you may know yourself. It says that you may know Him, the only true God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Exposing the heart of the Father in Christ and exercising the consciousness of men to the truth. And the Bible says that in those days, these days
days knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation knowledge is the key do you face contradiction or feel unsatisfied with some parts of scripture is the life of salvation still a struggle for you or finding it hard to manifest the spirit this is the good news there is a banner of grace for you right here and now Catalasso Ministries welcomes you to feast at meat, the table of grace that shall build you up to the fullness that filleth all things. Make flesh spirit.